specifically talk to any member of the staff. The door has always been open to them to be able to get some more information or concerns you have. So it's given us enough time period to hope everybody's had an opportunity to take advantage of it. Tonight, I'd just like to ask the board members, how many of you had an opportunity to come to individually and talk to any of the staff on your concerns? Any board members have that, took that chance and the liberty to do so? The, the, that door has been open to the board, and the staff has always been willing to do so. And the same with the public. How many of you had an opportunity to come in and, and talk, talk to them? But the, there's been about a four and a half week window in there, and that's why we didn't vote on this, is to make sure you had some opportunities to, to speak with the board, and also with the, the staff. The board pretty well, I think, understands the reasons for the rate increase, but how to exactly explain the whole thing is more complicated. I think I could probably uh, explain to it. I can probably mess it up. But Bart and Jason and Mr. Stewart can pretty well explain a lot of this. I think today we've gone through two hours of listening to what bonds were. I think Bart presents some good information to you. Additional, what we've also been talking about with uh, at a public hearing with it. But this Heber Light Power is really the only energy provider in this valley. The company has to provide services 24-7. It must maintain its current level of service along with planning for the future where customers will not be without energy during the time they need it. The first and main objective of this company and the board is to provide adequate and reliable energy to our customers. The valley's growing. Our cost to provide services are increasing. You can see what Bart presented to us. We have over 400 miles of lines to maintain. The federal government has put a CO2 carbon footprint that will shut down a lot of our coal plants that produce some of the cheap power that we have to buy out on the open market. The cost to buy power is going to cost all of us more money. That's just a plain fact. There are elements in place that we cannot control some of the costs on. The S&P, Moody's, and Fitch's are independent firms that rate companies. They all look at the company's strategic plans, their projects for growth, their debt services, and they're watching to see if the governing bodies are putting in place the rates that are needed to cover their objectives. If this, company, if this company does not put in place this rate increase, the consequences will be another downgrade of the company. And next year, the board will be asking for a 10% rate increase instead of a 4.5%. Yeah. As chairman of the board, I have not publicly grandstanded on the changes that are needed. It serves no purpose to bring the public into a frenzy. It destroys company morale. It subjects our employees to public harassment on items they have no control over. No one individual can make changes, whether they are the chairman or the board or a board member himself, and tell the board as a whole, makes the changes. Everything else is just a political self-serving. We as board members have been accused of being unwilling to make changes. That is a false statement. We've been actively and pursuing modifications that need to be done. But there is an order in how we need to handle these changes. The information has been publicly released by some board members is not new information to the rest of the board. The rest of the board wanted to make sure the proper procedures were followed and the board was in consensus before some information was given out to the public. Yes, the board and the company understand we need to find ways to reduce costs. And when we do so, we'll apply it to our debt services and the liabilities that are unfunded. Yes, the board and the company are looking at changing some of the policies. Some we can change now, some can change in the near future, and some it may take us longer to get to. But it will be on our time frame using the proper procedures. Please allow us to do the job that you have elected us to do. We have, we have and will be looking for your best interest in mind. But I will leave a, a few moments to the board for any comments you'd like to make on the rate increase. Mr. Chairman, I don't think it's politically self-serving to be looking out for the rate payers. That's been my concern from day one. Is it fair to the ratepayers? I have a large family. I've gone to school for two decades. I know what it means to struggle to even pay the electrical bill. And I don't think it's fair for any ratepayer to have to have this rate increase, especially when our median income is so much lower than what we are paying out in salaries for our upper management. Yes. 
I think that all of the research that Colleen and I have done, where there has been free research and reputable research, shows that there's been a lot of excessive things of the past. Now, I can't change the past. I certainly can't change the bonuses that were budgeted last year and already paid out. But I do not think it's politically self-serving to look out for the ratepayers and to ask for more movement and for greater action on policies that we could have done months ago that we all knew were a problem and yet still haven't been resolved. And so because of those reasons, I'm really concerned about this rate increase. I do think it's regressive. I do think it's going to cause inflation in this valley. And I do think it gives the wrong incentives to large commercial owners for them to use electricity around the clock. Now granted, Jason's told us that's when it's cheaper around the clock, you know, later on in the evening and through the night hours, but I still think we need to look at a different rate structure that looks at those peak demand areas in the afternoon to the early evening and think about restructuring it that way instead of putting such a burden on the small commercial user. Well, I just, as I was speaking with um, Blaine and about some of the different things, part of the study, which I, I agree, because I'm a small business and I will get hit hard with the, um, the new uh, service charge on for a small, small business. And when I ask, why can't we restructure some of the commercial differently, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, but there's... Um, new meters that are being put in to help us collect the data so that we can better understand how those rates are being used overall. The residential rate meters are already in place, so they're able to collect that data. They haven't been able to collect all of that on the commercial end of the meters. Is that right? Okay. So if we approve the rate increase today, it will, it will help us in the step forward. However, in not we're almost to the year where we we're almost to where we can start that process on managing the commercial rates and adjusting those. So one of the things that we could do is next year come back and readjust that commercial because we will then have the proper information based on the meters that are being installed to give us the footprint of how those meters are being used. That was just a question that I asked because I, like I said, I'm a small business owner. It's, it's, it'll hit, but maybe it will only hit me for a year, and then maybe that rate increase will be adjusted, which I would hope that it would be, because I do believe that the commercial part of it does need to be looked at. However, if I understand how it's being done right now, residential is subsidizing commercial users. Is that correct? Okay, so a rate increase to a resident might be a two or three bucks on their bill, it's going to hit the commercial a little bit harder, but it will take it so that the commercial is paying for itself as opposed to us as residents subsidizing commercial. And what we want to do is balance, if I, if I understand this right, and I've only been here a few months, but if I understand it correctly, we want everybody to pretty much pay for what they're using. Commercial should pay for itself and residential should pay for itself. We should, one group shouldn't have to subsidize the other. But it's going to take some adjustments in our rates, and it may take us three years or less to come up with a better plan. I'm not going to say it's ever going to be perfect, but I think we're going to work really hard on that. My commitment as a board member is, is during budget time to look at those things that we can change, those things that we can adjust and adjust those. However, the cost for power, which is what this rate increase will cover, because as, as the coal plants go out and it costs us more for, for um, fuel, this portfolio that we have in our company is a very diverse portfolio. Part of that's going to go away, and so it is going to cost us more. I believe we're trying to be really fiscally sound moving forward to prevent a large increase down the road. I, I know that there's a lot of, of different things, and I, I would hope that you would give us the chance to, to really work through some of those things, but they really are two different things. There's the budget over here that we do have control over. 
there are the rates over here that we don't have a lot of control over, but we are trying to offset that so that users are paying for what they're using. So I would hope that you would understand our, our need or our, our mind for my understanding of why there needs to be this rate increase today. And I really apologize, but I have city council and I have to be there. And it starts at 6 o'clock. So if we could move, I mean, I'm sorry, but I do have to go. I, I, I will stay five more minutes. They'll, they, they can start without me. There's an going. opportunity to express itself before Al speaks, the opportunity to rest the board. One of the things that's said on that Fitch downgrade is rate payer sensitivity to rate increases may be heightened given recent issues related to the system's governance. And to me, it comes back to the public trust. And I feel like if we could make, I mean, I can't support a rate increase until I see that we've made exerted effort to cut costs. And, and maybe there are little things. I know that the coffee cost is not going to pay for what we need. But I feel like the public would feel, when they see things like that, it makes them feel like things are excessive and they're paying for more than what comparable power companies and our cities are getting. The salaries and these things, 800 bucks in a month for coffee, that makes people go, whoa, what's going on there? And they don't know how much a generator costs. So I don't, I'm not saying that these kind of cuts can make all the difference, but I feel like we need to give this, this effort to say, where can we cut? Bart said he's seen ways we can cut. I suspect there's every employee in this company would see something and go, hey, we could cut here or there. And most of the time in government, we don't get cuts until they have to cut because they don't have a choice. We've seen it in the federal government. We've seen it in the state government, and I see it in the city. We sit there and we finagle, how can we cut here and how can we do without? And I feel like that process hasn't happened here through the last several years through the recession. So for me, to represent the people who own this company, these ratepayers, I can't face my neighbor who says, a widow that says, after all my bills are paid, I have $20 left, and say, well, you know, it's okay if we up your base rate to $12.57, and we charge you a little more, but you know, it's okay, these things are little, we'll deal with that later. I feel like we have to do it before we can do a rate increase, so that the cuts have to be made because they're of necessity. And then in a month or two, or however long it takes to really feel like we've given our best effort to be responsive to the rate payers, then we can raise the rates. I know we have to raise the rates, but I don't feel like we've done due diligence to get our house in order before we do it. And so I can't support it. Woo! Jay, anything you want to say? You know, I've read the emails and, and the 1257 talk about, uh, and that was my concern, but then I went and looked at my meter that I have, uh, my agriculture out in, in Lake and my minimum bill that is sixteen dollars a month. So I thought, you know, maybe the twelve fifty seven isn't such a bad deal because my minimum there is sixteen. I understand what everybody's saying, I understand what you're saying, Colleen. Uh, but I think the people do have the faith in you because they elected you folks to do that. And I think you recognize that the rate increase is necessary. And I think they have the faith in you to make the corrections we go forward. If the rate increase is necessary, I think we need to make the rate increase and then make the corrections that you're talking about that we've been trying to make, I think, in the past few meetings that we've been doing. It. Maybe some people don't agree, but, but I, I think we've been trying to make those corrections and I, I think we are looking at those corrections. So if it's necessary for me, I'd just soon do it today and then continue to be vigilant in making the corrections. I'd like to prove before the pudding, and Kelly and I share in your thoughts. I guess it's my basic nature for the last two and a half years. Uh, I know that the company can come up with a meager 114000 in addition to the board. I know you've done a good job, too. You've been working at it. But I think it collectively, the board and management work together rather than separately on this. I believe that we can come up with at least hundred thousand. You know, it doesn't take too many ten thousand dollar expenses to run into hundred and fourteen thousand. So my feeling is like Kelly's and I, you know, you expressed it well. I uh, I hear from people, I've got a lot of emails and those are those are important to me. I talk to our residents, those I haven't talked to, I've taken a responsibility to represent them as I feel is appropriate. My representation would be to uh, not approve the rate increase at this time. 
Well, this board's had an opportunity to express their feelings and thoughts. Uh, I'll call for a vote. All those who are in favor of approving the rate increase of the coming budget, say aye. 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 Any those opposed? Aye. Nay. 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 Aye. Nay. Aye. Nay. Aye. 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 We've got three, so we're three, three. So we're tied up. So the motion fails by the vote. As I may have made a statement, but I do believe, as, as the staff and Bart, as we go through this coming year, we, we are looking for ways to, to save costs, cut back on costs, <coughs> and still implement them on some of our debt services we have and some obligations, liabilities. We still have an opportunity to do that. And we very well be looking at that. And so there is that opportunity. The money will go towards that. And that's maybe my concern. But my main concern also is that the situation that we're running the, the company. Uh, as Mark pointed out, we're going to run into a deficit. And then we're going to have to start digging into our reserves. Yes, we'll have a vote for a while. But how long can we last on that? And I just don't want to come back next year and say, well, we tried everything. There was a little bit to give. Now we're looking at a 10% increase. Eventually, what this budget has been set up for, what we're planning on doing, at least the projections with the given analysis, this rate increase is a, a three-year period. It's not just for this year, it's for next year and the third year to catch up with where we're at. It's not just a one-year rate. Okay, so that's analysis that have come in from off the surveys and the studies we put together. You know, you either have to trust those or not. The information provided for us, and the board will have to decide to stretch it along the line. Mr. Chairman, is it appropriate to ask for a motion to set a date for the budget review? It's going to have to be reviewed and see if there's areas that some of us believe we can eliminate that 114,468 deficit. Actually, 700,000. Well, yeah, I mean that's already that's already budget. Because we're that's already budgeted. We know that's enough. that's due, and we're short this much. Like I say, it doesn't take too many ten thousand dollar expenditures on any project or program. And my hope is that we don't attack elderly ladies or take away care for the children or get fire and police. That's just a little facetiousness. But we, I really believe that we can we can find some areas where we can draw some. So my recommendation, if it's appropriate, would be to set a date to begin this budget review and make the changes necessary to, to do that. We second that motion. Okay. A first, a second to do a budget review on the current 2014 budget, fiscal budget. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Perhaps at that meeting that the company employees could also bring suggestions for cuts along with our staff. I think it ought to be, I think it ought to be more inclusive. Uh, I agree. I mean, anything we can do to work together and discuss different areas of different areas of responsibility. I don't believe seriously that we'll we'll find it an unchallenged or an unobtainable effort to resolve that hundred and fourteen thousand. Bob is the Delta Well, we're already into a budget that we have funded, supposedly. That's to clear our own act. That has nothing to do with our capital. <coughs> Say again? That's to clear our own act. has nothing to do with our capital. So a $250,000 transformer failure funds our reserves. Um, the $400,000 Binary conductor uh, Charleston. I still, I still think that so, we ought to that we ought to go over the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, that that would satisfy, I believe, the desires of our payers. Uh, as like I say, as I represent those that haven't discussed everything with me, I would ask myself what would I do and what would I want to do. So uh, in that light, I think that we still ought to possibly do it and see where we can all a little bit of extra, extra cash. I'll set the date. I, I, I think that was part of the recommendation, not just that we agree to do that, but it's a time when it would be appropriate. I think what you need to do, Bob, is, is have that as an agenda item separately. Yeah. Yeah. 